Okay, uh, um, my name is Ola Dyer. My co-presenter is Bob. We'll be presenting on the paper scan, which for um, learning to classify images without labels. Scan is um, basically an acronym for semantic clustering of, um, yes, semantic clustering used in near, um, nearest neighbors. So, Okay, so basically scan, the whole idea of scan is it's, uh, it's under unsupervised image classification. And the whole purpose of unsupervised image classification is to group a set of unlabeled images into semantic meaningful clusters, as you can see from the image below. So that's what um, scan intends to do, the objective of scan. So previous work, in previous works, according to SCAN, there have been two dominant approaches to doing this. One path has been through representation learning, and the other path has been through end-to-end -end learning. In representation learning, the method, the, the overall idea behind representation learning is that you have a self-supervised learning pretext, pretext task, and then an offline clustering that is performed on the embeddings generated from the uh, pretext task. An example, the examples are usually classified, they, um, grouped it into two. One that involves predicting the transformations, for example, rot rotation prediction and colorization. And the other, which is more of an instance discrimination, you have Sinclair and um, Morco, which is um, momentum contrastive learning. In end-to-end -end learning, they use um, CNNs as prior. So the whole idea behind this is that they the neural network and the clustering are coupled together and the, the losses are used to are combined together to update the, the neural network. So it's done all together in one, one full epoch. Throughout every epoch, the neural network and the clustering are being updated. So examples are deep clusters and you have um, the DEC, DEC, and, and there are some other additional ones that are available. So what's the motivation behind this particular paper? What do they intend to achieve? So one, they, they're trying to address two challenges, one from the representation learning, the other from end-to-end -end learning. From, end -to, from representation learning, the, the challenge they're trying to address is, the, is cluster degeneracy. So because the clustering and the, um, the training of the neural network are decoupled, they're separate, it's, they're saying, their, their issues, their challenge with this is that the, the k-means or whatever they're using to get the clusters is prone to cluster degeneracy, which could be just one singular cluster being generated. In the end-to-end end -end learning, they're saying, because end-to-end -end learning, it depends on, it has a dependence on initialization because the whole, the, uh, the way it's, um, it works, they're, they're, the challenge that they're trying to address there is, is the likelihood of the model to latch onto low level features like a singular blue dot and then bring in images with a blue dot closer and closer in the latent space. So the methodology of how um, scan works is that it takes a set of, it, it, they have basically two steps. It solves a pretext ta task and mines the, the k nearest neighbors in, in that one step. And in the next step, they saw it trains the clustering model using a scan loss. Now, this is basically the idea behind it is that it takes unlabeled, unlabeled images, takes it through a pretext model. And in that pretext model, um, it mines the k nearest neighbors for every single for, the, for the, every single image. So mines is K nearest neighbors, gets his K, um, K nearest neighbors, and then just basically uses the, the goes through all of this using the loss and um, runs this for a while. Outputs basically this, those K nearest neighbors and the images for the clustering model to basically create, separate them into semantic clusters, into individual semantic clusters. In addition to these two extra steps, they did a third step, which is not really mentioned as a, as a third step, but it, it is somewhat a third step that it's a basically 
uh, a self-labeling thought step to fine tune the the results the model generates the model the, to fine tune the results after the model has clustered has done this clustering so the fir the first part to consider in this method meta in their methodology is to look at how did they decide to pick the pretext task because they could have it's possible some people might look at this and pick up decide to pick up any pretext task, but they had a, spe a special criteria that had to be met for the, uh, a pretext task to be chosen. And for them it's just that the pretext task must be invariant in respect to the augmentations. And in, 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 in general, what this means is that no matter what the initial, what, what augmentation that image was transformed into, this the, the algorithm should still be able to um, should still be able to recognize the image as part as part of this exact this um, semantic class or semantic um, cluster. So it should, it should be able to it, it brings those images close to getting the embedding space, regardless of the transformation of that image. Now, for the clustering um, side of it. So, um, this is where I'll say that this part of like um, what's interesting about is that a cluster, they basically create a clustering function that uses a neural network. So this is a different neural network than the neural network that was used during the, um, the, the initial um, phase of the, the initial phase of the pretext task. This is a, a new, different neural network is used to in, in the clustering phase of it. So the scan loss itself, the purpose of the scan loss is to bring um, images or should I say samples that are within the same, you can call them the same neighborhood, bring them closer together by enforcing a consistent prediction among those neighbors and also maximizes the entropy. So you have the entropy section of it and you have this section that, that does the consistent prediction among um, samples within the same neighbors. Then this is the, the, the you can call this the second step B, or you can just call it a, a third step. So basically this third step is um, used to basically fine tune the, pre the, the neural network that was used for the clustering section. And if you look at this, some of you might already recognize that this somewhat already looks like a the semi-supervised uh, technique called fixed match. Because what happens is that they take an image, take it through the clustering model, take a uh, perform a transformation on that image and take it through, through the clustering model too. And a pseudo, la a pseudo label is made on that image on what's, what is generated from the clustering model. And once the probability is above a certain threshold, which is basically, it, the, for them is what you, um, they call it a prototype that is very confident about on this particular image, that is now used with the cross entropy loss with the, the strongly augmented um, image. And this is used to update and fine tune the, 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 the clustering model, the, the model that was used for clustering. So now I'm, I'm going to pass it off to Bob to continue from here. All right, thanks so much. And so in the paper, they perform a number of experiments on three smaller data sets, as well as the ImageNet data set. So for all of these experiments, they use a ResNet uh, 18 backbone. And for every sample, they get the 20 nearest neighbors, which are determined either through Sim, uh, and it's either through SimClear for the smaller data set or MoCo for the ImageNet data set. And after that, they do the clustering step, which is done for about 100 epochs. And then they train for another 200 epochs using this self-labeling procedure. And the threshold they use is 0.99. And so the next slide, if you don't mind. And the next slide, okay, thanks. 
Then they conduct a number of um, they conduct a number of these studies to quantify the performance gains of for the different parts of the method. So at first they look at this pretext task and they compare the image rotation prediction with the tasks uh, that involve SimClear. And for example, both of these report high accuracy, but the one which satisfies this invariance criterion is better suited to mine these nearest neighbors. Second, they show that the self-labeling does enhance the quality of these cluster assignments going from the around 82% to the 88%. And during the self-labeling, uh, this works because this network corrects itself as it gradually becomes uh, just more confident in the samples. Uh, and next slide, please. So in these ablation studies, they show that SCAN outperforms both the pretext task plus the k-means clustering. And in the case of the STL10, uh, SCAN slightly outperforms uh, the supervised classification task. And what is even interesting here is that the pretext task plus the k-means clustering, this tends to outperform some of the state-of-the-art uh, methods like the deep cluster, which we'll see in this next slide. So in the next slide, we see their comparison of scan to some of the state of the art uh, 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 and to some of the end-to-end -end approaches, which are state of the art and the k-means clustering uh, and that with the pretext test is about 65.9%, which outperforms all of these approaches which gives credence to their proposal that we should separate the feature learning from the clustering. And then on to the next slide, if you don't mind. So here are the results on all of the approaches um, and their proposed method, it consistently outperforms prior work by large margins on all of these three data sets and it obtains close to the supervised performance on CIFAR as well as STL10. So this is just uh, showing the results on all of the models. And then to the next slide. They also consider the challenge of unsupervised image classification on the, um, and so this is on the ImageNet data set. And they show that again, scan outperforms the pretext task plus the k-means clustering. So on this image, I'll show you three things. So on the bottom left, you will see the clusters which have been extracted by the model on ImageNet. Note that this includes a variety of backgrounds and viewpoints, which points to the fact that we want to cluster images uh, and these should be based on these high level features and not based on these low level features. The second is on the bottom right, you will see that uh, they zoom into seven super classes from this ImageNet uh, matrix. And you'll note that you know, there is some misclassification, but those misclassified examples tend to be assigned to other clusters in the same super class. So for example, if you look at the dogs, a superclass, you know, this is the model misclassifying one breed from another breed. And then finally, in the table at the top right, it shows that SCAN outperforms several of the semi-supervised learning approaches without using labels. Uh, and then to the next slide. So the take home point from this paper is that we should have a two-step approach which involves a pretext task which satisfies this invariance criterion as well as clustering and then an optional self-labeling step. Their proposed method actually focuses on high-level features that cluster images into these semantic classes. And they think that this approach can be extended to other domains including a semantic segmentation, semi-supervised learning, and then other data modalities, including audio and video. Uh, and then finally, uh, we point to a few references, um, one of which is the paper. Uh, the second is the slides from ECCV20. 
And there's a very good uh, video which explains this paper, which is on YouTube. And then the code is available online, which is in PyTorch. Uh, so this is, this is our distillation of this paper and we look forward to any questions that you might have.